Hello, and welcome back to Geo's add-on tutorials. We're working with Pitbull 4, and this is module 5 called Alert the Media. In this particular module, we're going to look at four various types of media that Blizzard makes available to you, the UI configurer, and also to add-on developers as well to allow you to pretty up the interface with your own changes. As you can see, I've done some prep work again for this particular tutorial. This is my player frame again. I've added some texts, uh, health and power, name and class, and I've also added a second blank space bar just to give me an anchor point for, for those texts as well. And uh, the first thing we're going to look at is background. So in order to properly display this, I want to do a couple of things here. First, in the Bars section, Layer 1 tab, General, I'm going to increase the padding, which again is this area outside the frame, make it the maximum value. So this is now the background color of the frame around this border here. And then second thing I'm going to do is with a couple of the bars here, so let's go with the bottom one here, so this is blank space another one. I'm going to change its opacity. Now blank space bars by default have just this black coloring. Even though they do have a texture applied, the texture is not visible because no color has been selected. If I were to add a color to it, the texture would show through, but I'm going to leave it black for now. And I'm also going to change its opacity to zero. As you'll see this, uh, as I do this, this will fade out and all you will see is the background color. Right. I'm going to do the same thing with the health bar. Now again, under normal circumstances, you would never do this because you actually do want to see your health. But just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to fade that completely away. And all I'm left with is the background color here. So where do I set background color? First thing, make sure that background module is enabled. And then in the other Layer 1 tab, you now have a Background Layer 2 tab. Again, an Enable button and the color you can set with your standard kind of color picker here. I'm going to change to something very obvious. We'll go to a light blue. And you'll notice that it still is a little bit see-through. That's the opacity setting here. We'll make it completely solid if I want to. That looks really darn ugly. But nevertheless, that's where you change your background color. And I would actually say that Blizzard's, or I should say Pitbull's default here, of black with about half opacity is actually pretty reasonable for most UIs. You can, of course, make it completely invisible, no background. But the default is actually pretty reasonable for, for, uh, for most UIs, as I said. So let's go, while we're here, take a look at one more thing, and that's Border. Border is another module that can be enabled or disabled. Border generally is used for at least the other three options down here, colorings, uh, Elite, Rare, and Boss, are really only ever used on your target frame. For most other frames, pretty useless. They allow you to set a different color and texture for the various types of special units that appear in game. And this is pretty close to the defaults that Blizzard itself uses. So instead of having the silver dragon for a rare, the gold dragon for an elite, and the sort of purple for a boss, they just make the, instead of having the dragon texture there, they just give you the coloring around the edge of the tooltip. All other units acquire this normal texture. By default, is set to none, but I'll show you the options that you have available to you here. So first, make sure that it's a solid, bright color, so it'll be easy to see. This is the Blizzard Achievement Frame. You can also see that as I hover over these, it changes the border of the drop-down to match, but I'm going to do it so that you can see it on the unit frame. There's the Achievement Frame. It's kind of dark. It has a sort of red tint to it. And that's really only ever used, I believe, on the achievement frame. There's the chat bubble. 
that's used in the uh, whatever if you have chat bubbles enabled in your UI. Dialog. This is used for many many different uh, elements in in the uh, default interface. Dialog gold changes it to kind of a goldish tint. Party, which is the rounded left, square edge right. Tooltip, which is by far the most common one in interfaces. And then, of course, the default of none. So those are the various border options that you have access to. I'm going to leave it on none for now. I'm going to go back to the bars. I'm going to undo those changes I made here. So let's go to general, change your padding back. And get my opacity back for health and the blank space bar. And let's take a look at the textures that are available. Again, very minimal by default. You only really have two textures. And I should do this in the general tab first. If you make a change to the texture in the general tab, it applies to all other bars in your in your in that layout. And again, there's really really only two. The default blizzard one. And then the character skill frame. So you can see this is the skill frame one. And then again the blizzard one. If I want to make a change to an individual bar and not all at once, I can go to that bar and make the change here instead. So now you can see I maintain the blizzard texture here and then the character skills one here. But again, not very many options. You only really have the two. And then finally fonts. So let's go to the texts layer one tab. And similar to what we just looked at with the bar textures, you do have two places you can change the font. And if I make a change here, this will affect all of the fonts used in the whole layout. Arial narrow is the default. Fritz Quadrata, Morpheus, and Scurry. And as you'll see when I make these changes, it changes all the fonts in the layout. There's Morpheus and Scurry. But as before, if I want to make changes to individual text, I can do that by selecting the text here. So let's go to Name and then change here to Fritz Quadrata. I'll change the power to Morpheus and then I'll change the class to scurry. So again you can see I've used a different font for each text here. But again you really only get the four. However it is definitely possible to extend the number of options that you get access to and that's especially true for fonts and bar textures in particular. So how do we do that? So that's indicated or at least hinted at whenever you hover over this you can see the tooltip that appears there indicates that we want to install an add-on called shared media. Let's go do that. As it happens, as I showed in module one, I do have this add-on control panel add-on loaded that allows me to make those changes quickly here without having to go out to the character selection screen. But certainly you can just pop out and load the add-ons and then enable them. There are three of them, shared media, shared media additional fonts, and shared media blizzard. So this allows all of the possible fonts, textures, and so forth to appear in the configuration configurations for the various add-ons that take advantage of shared media. So how does this look now? Let's take a look at bar textures first. Okay, default textures. Wow. Now we have a lot of textures available. And as you can see, this is quite a long list, giving you all sorts of different options here. And this now becomes really a matter of personal choice. You can basically select anything from completely flat textures with almost no real border to them or anything all the way up to really highly decorative textures that have
frosting and all kinds of things. There's also a couple that are really useful for things like rep bars. This divides the bar into fifths. And there's also one for fourths. So 75% health, 50%, 25%. Pretty useful. Or, again, like I said, all kinds of different stylized options here. Nice patterns and so forth in them. But again, completely up to you how you want to do that. Select whatever you whatever you see fit, whatever matches the overall look and feel of the UI that you're trying to accomplish. You won't see any changes to backgrounds, because again, there's no textures involved, it's just a color. A few more borders available now. There's one called Roth Square. Uh, let me open my padding up a little bit here again so you can see that. This one's hard to see. But it essentially gives you an edge, a squared off edge around the unit frame as well. Something called Cirrus Scalloped, which you can see has this nice little bubble effect. Text panel and wood border. And again, each of those has its own particular characteristic. I'm going to go back to None and go to Fonts right after I change my padding again. Now, how many fonts do we have access to? Oh yeah. Now we're talking. Again, many, many more options available. Everything from Star Trek themes to the defaults that were in there already, nice bold face themes, some pretty wacky looking themes as well, all depending on how you want your your UI to look. Quite a, quite a bit of configuration, quite a few configuration options here, and really you can set this however you see fit. And that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about with the various types of media. As you can see, the shared media extends what Blizzard offers by default by quite a lot. And hopefully, after seeing this, you now will be able to modify all those various uh, aspects of the unit frames to get a more personal look and feel to your textures and your fonts and so on. I hope you join us for further modules, and thanks for listening.